chilling? Where there's so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. Now I think twixt the Negroes in the South and the white women in the North, <laughs> the white man will be in a fix pretty soon. But what's all this here talking about? That man over there said that women need to be helped into carriages and, and lifted over ditches and have the best place everywhere. When nobody ever helps me into carriages or over ditches or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arms. I have plowed and planted and gathered in the barn that no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I've borne 13 children and seen them most all sold off into slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Then that talk about this, this, uh, with the, the thing in the head, with the, uh, the, the inner, in, in, intellect, intellect, that's it. But, but what's that got to do with women's rights or Negroes' rights? If my cup won't hold but a pint and yours holds a quart, wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my little half measure full? And then, then that, that, that man in black over there said that women can't have the same rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Well, where did your Christ come from? Where did he come from? He come from God and a woman. Man ain't had nothing to do with it. Now, if the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn this world upside down alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And he's asking to do it. And the men, you better let them. Now, I'm, I'm blind to y'all for, for hearing me. Now, also, Johnny ain't got nothing more to say. Hello, my name is Karen Slack, and thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. 2020 has been an incredible year. The pandemic, Black Lives Matter movement, so much loss. And the one thing I kept thinking about was what I'd like my story to be in 2020. Say her name. Say her name. Say her name was a part of my story that I wanted to tell. I want to spotlight the women who were the creators of the various social justice movements we will present today. Today, we will say their names. Sojourner Truth was born with the name Isabella Baumfrey. Despite being born into slavery and never learning how to read or write, she would become one of the most powerful advocates for human rights in the 19th century. In upstate New York, Isabella was sold at nine years old at auction. She was sold with a flock of sheep for $100. Like many enslaved humans, she experienced the misery of being sold several times and of being subjected to hard labor being cruelly beaten until one morning she rose before anyone else and fled with her infant child, Sophia. I did not run away, she said, for I thought that wicked. I walked away by daylight, believing that to be all right.
Isabella Baumfrey believed that she was called by God to testify to the hope that was in her, and thus she renamed herself Sojourner Truth. Sojourner because she was to travel throughout the land, and Truth because she believed that the Spirit called her to preach truth unto the people. Sojourner Truth was said to stand six feet tall and possess a very deep voice. Her fiery style inspired all who heard her, and during the Civil War, she used this powerful gift of preaching to raise money and to recruit black troops to fight in the Union Army. When the cause was won, her work was not over. Throughout her long life, she continued to speak out for women's rights, for prison reform, and for the rights and dignity of all individuals. Ida B. Wells was born into slavery in Mississippi during the Civil War and was freed shortly after her birth. She became a teacher at age 16 to provide for her siblings after both her parents died during a yellow fever epidemic. Her fierce intellect, together with an indignation at the plight of the Negro in the South, led Wells to take to her pen. She became a journalist and newspaper owner in Tennessee. It wouldn't be long before her offices were ransacked, her presses burned, and her life threatened. Ida B. Wells' work had become even more personal in 1898 when a close friend was murdered by lynching in her hometown. At this point, she turned to investigating, researching, interviewing, and even attending lynchings in order to thoroughly document the atrocities, in order to be a witness. She did everything in her power to make the whole country aware of these murders. Side by side with the whites, she walked. Step after step, the Southerners balked. But Illinois, fond of order and grace, stuck to the black queen of our race. Today, the grand old march is over. There are many white women sore because of their prejudice to trace the dignity of the queen of our race. Still in their mind there is a thought, and deep in their heart lesson taught not to worry oneself about another's place. The victory is won for the queen of our race. After laboring for nearly two decades to bring these crimes to light, she delivered a powerful speech at the National Negro Conference in New York City. The lynching record for a quarter of a century merits the thoughtful study of the American people. It presents three salient facts. First, lynching is color line murder. Second, crimes against women is the excuse, not the cause. Third, it is a national crime and requires a national remedy. Thousands of assassins have banded together under the name of the Ku Klux Klan and the Midnight Raiders and have spread a reign of terror by beating, shooting, and killing colored people. Their purpose was accomplished. The black vote was suppressed. But still, mob murder continued. 3,284 men, women, and children have been put to death in this quarter of a century. <coughs> Wells wrote exhaustively, spoke publicly, backed up her words with actions, and prodded and provoked her black siblings when they weren't moving fast enough in the direction of justice. It was only in private, in her diary, that she allowed herself despair. I had hoped such great things for my people generally, she wrote. I have firmly believed all along that the law was on our side and would, when we appealed to it, give us justice. I feel shorn of that belief and utterly discouraged. And just now, if it were possible, I would gather my race in my arms and fly away with them. i
I remember 10 years ago today, as I had walked about 10 or 12 feet out of Winona Jail, Reverend James Belvey informed me that Metka Evers had been shot in the back. It was six of us that had gotten out of jail in Winona. Some of us wasn't able to sit down. But I keep saying, Burley, and keep asking God to hold my hand, Charlie Evers. Because I know if he hold my hand, everything will be all right. Precious Lord. This is the Take voice of Fannie Lou Hamer. Born into a sharecropper family on a cotton plantation in Mississippi in 1917. For a few months of every year, when she wasn't in the cotton fields, Fannie Lou was allowed to attend a one-room school, and there she distinguished herself in reading, writing, and Bible studies. But soon, Fannie Lou was much too valuable in the fields to spare, for by the time she was 12, she was picking hundreds of pounds of cotton a day. On the plantation, she married and hoped to start a family, 
but Fannie Lou had been sterilized without her knowledge by a white doctor while going in for minor surgery. It was a practice so common the sharecroppers called it a Mississippi appendectomy. Fannie Lou Hamer set her sights on voting rights for Negroes in Mississippi. And in 1962, she boarded a bus for the county seat in order to register. She failed the test that day. I'll be back here every 30 days, she said, until I pass. On the way home that night, the bus was pulled over and the driver arrested. The bus was the wrong color. The passengers waited aboard the bus, gathering money to pay the driver's fine. And while they waited, Fannie Lou began to sing. By the time that bus rolled into Ruleville, Mississippi that night, the plantation owner had heard what Fannie Lou Hamer had dared to do. Well, Fannie Lou said, you will have to go down and withdraw or you will have to leave. He said, we are not ready for that in Mississippi. He wasn't ready, but I've been ready a long time. <laughs> I had to leave that same night. On the 10th of September in 1962, 16 bullets was fired into the home of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Tucker for me. That same night, two girls were shot. They also shot in Mr. Joe McDonald's house. Is this America where people are being murdered, lynched, and killed because we want to register and vote? Woke up this morning with my mind. Over the next few years, Fannie Lou Hamer fought hard for voter registration and for basic civil rights for Negroes in the Mississippi Delta, for the right for enough food, adequate clothing, a home, a job, and a decent education, for the simple right not to live in constant fear. And like the brave women who came before her, she roused her brothers and sisters with all she had. And pray until you faint. But if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. That's why I tell you tonight that you have a responsibility. And if you plan to walk in Christ's footsteps and keep his commandments, you are willing to lunge out into the deep and go to the courthouse. Not come here tonight to see what I look like, but to do something about the system here. By now, Fannie Lou Hamer was known to white Mississippi as an agitator, and in June of 1963, the police arrested her after she attended a voter education workshop. That night, Fannie Lou was brutally and violently beaten in an assault that left her with permanent injuries, but she did not stop. Fannie Lou Hamer became a founder of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party and ran for Congress as their candidate. She gave testimony in Washington on voter suppression and spoke out about her assault and the dark and reasons behind it. began to and one white man got up and began to beat me in the head and tell me to hush. All of this is on account of we want to register to become first class citizens. And if the Freedom Democratic Party is not seated now, I question America. Is this America? The land of the free and the home of the brave, where we have to sleep with our telephones off of the hook because our lives be threatened daily because we want to live as decent human beings in America. Thank you.
Heaven? Where does a black girl go when her body is emptied of her? And her wild voice, where does it sing its story when the knots of history make a grave of her throat? What of her future? Blue, broken, unmade? Her name? Say it. Sandra. Unhoused. Her dreams and memories lost to their source. Where does a black girl's love go when her heart is snapped shut like a cell door, the key out of reach as any justice? And what unimaginable gift is lost when a black girl is made a body, her light dimmed into shadow, gone? How many angels weep when a black girl is torn into wings? Lauren Elaine wrote this incredible poem in response to the death of Sandra Bland, a 28-year-old African-American woman who was found hanged in a jail cell in Waller County, Texas in 2015. This was only three days after Sandra was pulled over by a police officer for a failure to signal. In a racially charged and angry exchange, Sandra was threatened with a taser, dragged from her car, had her head slammed on the ground, and finally, she was arrested and thrown into jail. Three days later, Sandra was found dead and her death ruled a suicide. Sandra was dead and hashtag say her name was born. I am incredibly inspired by the movements spearheaded by black women in my own lifetime. Me Too was a phrase created in 2006 by Tarana Burke that was meant to empower women and bring awareness to those who have been victims of sexual violence. Hashtag Black Lives Matter was founded in 2013 by Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opal Tometi, and has since become a powerful global hum human rights movement that was created in response to the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's murderer, George Zimmerman. And in December 2015, the Say Her Name campaign was created by co-founder and executive director of the African American Policy Forum, Kimberly Crenshaw, along with its members and the Center for Intersectionality and Social Policy Studies. The hashtag Say Her Name was coined to amplify all too often forgotten names and stories of Black women and girls who have been victims of police violence. For 30 years, Ms. Crenshaw has been working to help our society see how different factors converge for Black women and girls specifically. Factors that make us seem not as vulnerable, but actually more vulnerable to racist police violence. She calls this intersectionality. It's a blueprint or a prism as she puts it to look through so that we can understand what it means in this society to be poor, to be black, and to be a woman, often a common denominator for black women who have died at the hands of police. Police violence against black women is very real. The level of violence that black women face is such that it's not surprising that some of them do not survive their encounters with police. Black girls as young as seven, great grandmothers, as old as 95, have been killed by the police. They've been killed in their living rooms, in their bedrooms. They've been killed in their cars. They've been killed on the street. They've been killed in front of their parents, and they've been killed in front of their children. They have been shot to death. They have been stomped to death. They have been suffocated to death. They have been manhandled to death. They have been tasered to death. They've been killed when they've called for help. They've been killed when they were alone and they've been killed when they were with others. 
They have been killed shopping while black, driving while black, having a mental disability while black, having a domestic disturbance while black. They've even been killed being homeless while black. They've been killed talking on the cell phone, laughing with friends, sitting in a car reported as stolen, and making a U-turn in front of the White House with an infant strapped in the back seat of the car. Why don't we know these Why stories? Don't we know these Why stories? don't we know these stories?
For me, hashtag say her name reminds me that we must continue to give voice to those who can no longer speak for themselves until justice is served. It is a command, not an ask, to all people who believe in this movement for real social justice. The incredible work Ms. Crenshaw and her colleagues are doing alongside the mothers of the victims and various other organizations is impactful. And I hope we will proudly speak of our modern day movements the way we speak about movements of the past. Movement in black, movement in black, can't keep them back. Movement in black, movement in black, movement in black, can't keep them back. Movement in black. I am black. the black Movement woman, black. and I have been all Can't over, up on platforms Movement and stages black. talking Movement about freedom, black. freedom Movement for black, black folks, freedom Can't for women black. in the Civil War Movement too, carrying black. messages, Movement bandaging bodies, spying Movement and lying. Black. The Can't South lost, black. and Movement I still lost. Black. But I was there, and I kept moving. I am the black woman, and I have been all over. I was on the bus with Rosa Parks, and in the streets with Martin King. I was marching and singing and crying and praying. I was with SNCC, and I was with CORE, and I was in Watts when the streets were burning. I was a panther in Oakland. In New Can't York, with black. now, in Movement New York, in, in San Francisco, Movement with gay in liberation, black. in D.C. with black. the radical dykes. Can't yes, I was black. there, and Movement I'm still black. moving. Roll call, shout them out. Phyllis Movement Wheatley, Sojourner Movement Truth, Harriet Tubman, Francis Ellen Movement Watkins Harper, Stagecoach Mary, Lucy Movement Prince, Mary Can't Pleasant, Mary McLeod Bethune, Rosa Parks, Coretta King, Fanny Lou Hamer, Marion Anderson, and Billy's and Bessie Sweet Dinah, Aretha, Natalie, Shirley Chisholm, Barbara Jordan, Patricia Harris, Angela Davis, Flo Kennedy, Zora Neale Hurston, Nikki Giovanni, June Jordan, Audrey Lord, Edmonia Lewis, and me. And me. And me. And me. And me. And all the names we forgot to say. And all the names we didn't know. And all the names we don't know yet. I am the black woman. I am the child of the sun, the daughter of dark. I carry fire to burn the world. I am water to quench its throat. I am the product of slaves. I am the offspring of queens. I am still as silence. I flow as the stream. I am the black woman. I am a survivor. 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 Movement in black. Movement in black. Can't keep them back. Movement in black. Movement in black. Movement in black. Can't keep them back. Movement. Run, 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 moan, run, bright angel above. Run, run, moan, run, bright angel above. If I just had your wing, bright angel 
above if I just set your wing, bright angels above. I'd fly away to the kingdom, bright angels above. It fly away to the kingdom, bright angels above. And lend me your wing, bright angels above. And lend me your wing. Bright angels above, escape for your life. Bright angels above, escape for your life. Bright angels above, if I just catch your wing. Bright angels above, if I just catch your wing.